Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, my name's Mary Ellen. I'm a planner by nature, but I was not always that way. I had years and years and years of starting a planner and then using it for a few weeks and then giving it up over and over and over and over again. So if you clicked on this video, that probably means you're in the same boat. I'm gonna share some tips on how I made the planner habit stick for me. And if you're interested in learning how to do that for yourself, keep watching. Okay, so you bought a planner, you used it for a couple weeks. Now you either can't find it or you just set it aside and you look at it, it makes you feel guilty every time. And your life's kind of out of control. <laughs> um, I'm here to tell you that it is possible to make this a habit. There's just a couple of tricks. You have to really make an effort, but you can do it. So I've been planning consistently for about two and a half years now. And I think the number one, so I'll share a bunch of tips with you, but here's the first tip. The number one thing that changed planners for me and made me use them was decorating them. For me, that's what I needed to do. I needed to make it pretty with pretty stickers and with drawings and with hand lettering. And it's something that just made my heart happy. I know not it's not for everybody, but if you're on this channel, it might be for you. So if I decorated it every week, I would write it in every week. If I didn't decorate it, I would not write in it. This happened multiple times before the habit stuck. So it kept me on track functionally, and I'm not sure I would have continued if I had not made it into like this hobby that I made it into. So that's my first tip is make it pretty. Or if you don't want to use stickers and stuff like that, then buy a really pretty planner. <laughs> buy one that has decorations on it that you love and that you don't need to change and that you don't need to add to. But make it something that you want to open, something that is exciting for you and something you like to look at. Because if you don't like to look at it, you're not going to use it. That being said, if you are starting to decorate your planner, um, keep it, first of all, only decorate it for you. Do exactly what you want to do. Don't do it to compare to anybody else's planner. Don't watch my videos and be like, I, I don't like the way I'm doing it. Maybe I can do it like her. Um, because it's, it's, you're not going to like it. <laughs> you're not going to like it after a while. You have to like, if say you love like, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of something like, say you love the show Vampire Diaries. I don't know why I thought of that. It's because my daughter Allie loves that show. <laughs> um, say you love that. You know what? Put that in your planner. Like, make it yours now, say you love like astrology start putting that stuff in your planner like make it look pretty with you know star stickers and all of that um the point is to make it something that you love and if you love it then you're more likely to use it now keep in mind it's not going to be exactly what you want if you're a new planner it's not going to be exactly what you want right off the bat it takes time takes time to make it look the way you want and it takes time especially to make it functional for you so my number one tip is to make it make it beautiful make it how you want it to look um because that's the only thing like if I wasn't decorating it I probably at this point after two and a half years yes I would still use it um two years ago if I didn't decorate I, I wouldn't have kept using it I don't think so that's important. Okay, number two, use one planner. I know that's crazy coming from someone who uses multiple planners. I understand that. 
and I showcase all these planners on my YouTube channel, I get that. I get that you are excited to start this hobby. I get that you are obsessed with it. I get that you want to have 10 different planners, one for each thing. Um, I know that excitement because I have felt it. But I'm here to tell you that is not a good idea when you start planning. Um, because <laughs> if you try to spread yourself too thin and spend too much time on this hobby and too much money and you have all these planners sitting around staring you in the face all the time, it will get overwhelming. Don't do that. Use one planner. Keep everything in that planner. Later on, if you have gotten into this habit and it's stuck, then branch out into separate planners. Now, an exception might be if you really need a planner for work and you really want a planner for home. Yeah, I mean, you can do that. But as far as, you know, your home life goes, like try not to break it out into a million different planners to begin with because it will just get overwhelming and you'll stop. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. If I was not on YouTube, if this was not my job, I would only use one planner. <laughs> um, I like the idea of keeping everything together in one place. That makes me feel good to keep it all together. But I can't do that. First of all, I want to showcase lots of different ways to use the planner because I'm teaching you to use the planners. Um, so that makes me use, well, actually I would use two, I take it back, I would use two planners. I would use one catch-all that stays at home and then just a mini to throw in my purse. I would, but I probably wouldn't decorate that mini if I wasn't doing these videos. Um, <laughs> and I know that sounds like, well then Mary Ellen, like why don't you just stop? Um, well, number one, like I said, it is my job to teach you to use these different planners and different layouts. It is my job to showcase them on Instagram. It is my job to give video tutorials on them. So that is the main reason I don't keep everything in one planner. I've also gotten really used to not doing that. And now it's to the point where I need a social media planner. Um, so I can't keep everything in one planner any anymore. I used to plan my social media in my big catch all. I can't do that anymore. Uh, cause it's gotten to the point where it's a full-time job. So I have to have a separate planner for that. I would be lost without my social media planner at this point. Um, but like I said, if this was not my job, um, if I just had like a regular nine to five job that I did not need a planner for, or if I was a stay at home mom or whatever, I would just try to, I would use one planner and then put multiple things in that planner. You can have different sections, you know, um, because then you only have to open one. <laughs> You don't have to remember to open a whole bunch of them. So, and again, it's fun. Like a mini in your purse is a good idea, I think, because I like having paper all the time and, and I like having my grocery list there and like, you know, important events and stuff. Um, but I think your best bet when you're starting out is just pick a planner that you love and that's gonna change. You might love it today. You might not love it next year, but then you can switch, you know? Um, and then just go with that one planner. Okay, tip number three is schedule a time. Well, not schedule, you don't have to schedule it. Pick a time where you're gonna sit down in your planner every day. That might be in the morning when you wake up and you have, you're drinking your coffee and you wanna have your planner in front of you so you can check things off and write down to-dos for today or things that happened yesterday because I do like to back plan. Or it might be in the evening after the kids go to bed and you're finally sitting down and you're like, let me just check my planner. Or it might be right before you go to sleep, you know, preparing for tomorrow. Just make it the same every day. And it's okay if you check it multiple times, but make sure you check it at that one time every day because you know, it takes like 21 days to make a habit. So they say, although it's been tougher for me with some habits, but if you pick one time a day, I think you're more likely to stick to it and pick one time a week to sit down and plan for the following week. 
and make it the same every week if possible. You can even set a timer on your phone, set an alarm, set a reminder so that it will pop up and tell you plan out next week. Um, when I do it is Sunday evenings. I pretty much plan in my planner every Sunday evening. Um, I'll start writing in everything for the week. Now, sometimes that doesn't happen until Monday because I'm out somewhere Sunday. I might be at my boyfriend's house and I don't usually bring my planner to his house, you know, um, unless I'm there for several days. But I might be like, you know, out to dinner with my parents. I come home late or something. I don't know. I mean, COVID, I'm not doing that. But in the past <laughs> and in the future, <laughs> we're going to be doing that. Uh, anyway, just set a time, set an appointment with yourself, write it in your planner even that you're going to sit down and plan at that certain time every single week. And again, repetition, repetition, repetition. So that is my third tip. Four, my fourth tip is to um, get involved in the planner community. And I know I've said this before multiple times, but that is the second thing that made me stick to my planner. In fact, if I was not involved in the planner community at this point, I'm not sure I still would even be decorating my planner because I tend to start hobbies and then kind of like, you know, get sick of them or like, oh, like I overdose on hobbies, you know what I mean? And then it's like, okay, I'm done with that. Let me move to something else. The problem with that, with planners and planning is that yes, it's a hobby and it's creative and it's kind of, for me, it's kind of um, like art. It, it's, it's like meditation almost for me. Um, the problem though, is it's also functional. So for me, I need to have a planner so that I can stay on track. Otherwise it's all in my head. If it's all in my head, <laughs> I'm gonna go crazy. You know, if I don't write things down to get them out of my head, I have a real problem because I have a lot of anxiety at that point, a lot. And also I'll forget things. I'll forget when things are, I'll forget appointments. I know I'm kind of getting off track here, but I guess what I mean is that yes, it's a hobby, but it's not a hobby that you should like drop like you do say you start knitting and then you knit for a few years and then you're you know you're doing something else so you're like gardening and then you're you're quilting and then you're um scrapbooking or something so you're doing all these different hobbies and most people don't do a bunch of hobbies at one time some people do i guess but most people get very deep into that one hobby for a couple years and then they move on to something else. I mean, that's what's always happened to me. So, but with this, it's keeping track of your life. This should not be a hobby that you stop. This should not be considered like a little side project. This should, this should really be considered something that's gonna keep you on track for the rest of your life. Whether you decorate it or not, whether you keep using stickers and paint and markers, whether you keep doing that or not, you should be using a planner, either a paper planner or a digital planner. I don't care which, but <laughs> I prefer the paper planner, obviously. Um, so wait, I, I totally got off topic. What was I saying? Oh yeah, the planner community. So, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, I would have stopped if it weren't for the planner community because I made friends. I made friends with people who were doing the same thing I was doing. Also, in addition to meeting people, what helped me keep me on track was I started planning with Bumble Instagram. And when I started that, I started posting a before the pen spread every week, and I posted an after the pen spread every week. And in the beginning, it was only just, it was just one planner. Uh, I was posting some other stuff like quotes and like stuff like that, but I was only doing one before the pen and one after the pen. And it was easy to keep track of that because it was one. It was just the one planner 
and I was doing it twice a week. And if I didn't post that, I felt weird because I got in the habit of posting it. Um, and even if you're not comfortable doing that, there's like Facebook groups that you can go on. And I've talked about these before where you can read about planning and it'll keep your excitement going. You'll get tips about functional planning. You'll get tips about decorating your planner and, uh, and you'll meet people and engage with them and, and talk to people there. Talking to people online really helps because they're excited about the hobby as well. And again, not a hobby, but in the beginning it feels like a hobby. <laughs> um, so, so yeah, get involved in the planner community in some little way. Or if you don't want to post anything, you could go on Instagram and just follow some planners, follow me, and just start looking at the pictures. If you're just regularly kind of don't do it too much. You can get addicted to Instagram. But if you're regularly doing this, then it will get, um, I don't know, it'll just remind you to use your planner. It will get you excited about it. It will give you ideas on how to be functional in your own planner. Another idea I had is to keep your planner in the same place all the time. I know that some people bring their planners in their purses and stuff, but if it's a planner that's just gonna stay at home, Keep it in the same place. Keep it on your desk or on the kitchen table or somewhere where you can leave it um, because then it's always gonna be there. You're gonna know where it is. I would also suggest when you're starting to keep it in a place that you're going to see throughout the day. Um, when I started planning, I did keep it on the kitchen table. I know that's like a little messy, but since it was on the table, I had it out and sometimes I would just leave it open and I would just remember to use it because I would walk, you know, you're in the kitchen all day long. I would walk past it all the time. Um, put it out somewhere where you'll see it. And once you get into the habit, then you can, you know, put it somewhere else. But if you put it out somewhere, you're going to look at it and you're most likely going to, you know, open it or keep it open and you're most likely going to be checking things off and reading it and writing in it. Um, also, one last tip I have for you is like, I don't know, give your, you know, like when you're trying to make a habit, like give yourself a little reward or something for every month or every week that you use your planner consistently. What you could do is, you know, your monthly spread, your monthly layout, you could like give yourself a special sticker for each week that you use your planner every day or each day you could put a different sticker in there or you could just do a check mark or something after a month do something special for yourself because that's a month that you've been using your planner and making it a habit um i don't know what that would be it's you know of course specific for each individual person but like do something special for yourself and Keep remembering that it takes a while for a habit to get ingrained in you. It really does. It takes a while. So if you slide back and you have like some days where you're not using it, don't beat yourself up. Just grab it again and start again. If you have two weeks, you haven't looked at it. Don't, don't like for me, my brain, how my brain works. Don't be like me. <laughs> Because my brain is all or nothing. I'm 100% or I'm zero. I'm either going all in and decorating and using my planners constantly or I won't use them at all. That's me. Don't be like me. <laughs> if you have problems, you know, and, and you fall off a little bit, it's okay. It, it takes a while. It takes a while to get used to it. It also takes a while for you to learn how to be functional in your planner and learn how to organize it the way you that's more like most functional for you that'll work with your life. Um, so give yourself a break. It's okay. Just pick back up again and try again. But the most important thing is just keep trying and don't um, don't put it aside in a pile of books on a bookshelf that you never look at. All right. I don't know if this was helpful or not. I hope it was, but, um, thanks for watching anyway. 
and stay tuned for doodle of the day. And hey, if you're new here and you're not subscribed, you can check out my other videos. Maybe you'll find something you like and hit that subscribe button. Thanks so much. See you next time. Bye.